Hi guys. So choosing a business structure and getting your business formally registered as a business is a huge part of actually being an entrepreneur. But there are so many schools of thought on this topic from what type of business should it be all the way to should you even take the time to register a corporate structure? Well, the answer is yes, you should. If you want to make money from your business, then it needs to be a registered business and the structure you choose is very, very important. But how do you pick a business type and get it registered? What are all the options out there and what's the difference between them? An LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp, a partnership, a sole proprietorship, and the list goes on and on. Well, in today's episode of CPTV, I'm going to walk you through all the types on how to get your business registered, including expert advice from a certified public accountant and an attorney. Bonus! So you can get the information you need today and get your business structure chosen and your business registered tomorrow. Let's get to work. giving you the blueprints that impact growth in your business and life. Hey love, Cheryl Perez here, or CP, whichever you prefer. Today's episode of CPTV is episode number four in the How to Set Up Your Business series. And if you missed the first three episodes or steps, please make sure you check them out in the cards and the links below in the description. So let's dive in. Now, I definitely have an opinion on this topic, and you know my opinion is that everyone's needs and goals are different, so everyone's end result and choice could potentially be different. The real issue is making sure that you have educated yourself enough about what all the options are so that you can make an informed decision that is in the best interest of you and your long-term business goals and objectives. And because everyone is going to have a different long-term goal or objective, it means that you may ultimately end up making a different choice about your business structure. So I know that a lot of people automatically say you need to choose an LLC. So much so that it kind of seems automatic at this point. And granted, an LLC is an amazing business structure to have, but I've actually had sole proprietorships, big mistake. I've had an LLC, I've had a partnership, I've had an S Corp, and they all served a different purpose at a different time in my business cycle. And it should be the same for you. And based upon that very first step in this series that we talked about, which is getting your mind right. Because if you don't have all the answers to those questions that we discussed, then it's going to be very difficult for you to even make this decision. So my opinion on what type of business structure you should use really doesn't matter, which is why I've decided to bring in the experts. So I have an amazing treat for you today, and this is a treat that would normally cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars for sure, because you're actually going to have access to the thoughts and opinions of a certified public accountant and a team of attorneys. And they are here in the CPTV studio to help you understand the differences and the critical considerations that you must have in order to really choose and make a good sound decision surrounding your business structure. So I am very excited to jump right into those expert opinions. So let's get to work. So please help me give a warm CP impact welcome to our guest attorneys from Bauer Stevenson, who are here today to give you some free legal advice and to provide you with some insight into the types of business structures that are out there from a legal and liability perspective and what it all means as you make a choice. Today, they will also give you some insight into other legal documents and paperwork that you might want to consider as you are actually establishing your business. So I am very excited to have both of them with us today. And before we get to the nitty gritty, I want to make sure that you guys know they are practicing attorneys. They do specialize in working with small to medium sized businesses from a corporate startup and level up perspective. And they have a ton of experience and knowledge. You can reach them by clicking the links below. So go ahead and reach out, especially if you need some legal advice, some assistance getting your business up and running or getting some operating agreements or some documents 
maintenance or whatever else you need in place because we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the importance of other documents today right now too. So make sure you click the links below and reach out to them and say hey and you can also follow them on their social media which is below as well. So let's get to work guys. Thank you so much. Welcome, Justin. And I appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I am excited about this topic because so many times, especially when someone is a hustler um, and they're trying to turn their hustle into legit, they have this like nagging feeling in their stomach and they're trying to figure out how to get their business set up. And sometimes people actually avoid doing the right things because they have no idea, no concept of what decisions to make. So I appreciate you coming in. Our audience appreciates you coming in. And you guys... I have no idea how lucky you are because you are getting some expensive legal advice here today for free. So do not take it for granted. Um, before we get started, I want to make sure you recognize that you have a link to be able to reach out to both Daniel and Justin from the firm down below. Make sure you click the link. It has their website. Check it out. And also their email addresses because they are open to you guys reaching out, asking questions and creating that relationship. So make sure that you take a look at those links and reach out. So let's just dive right in. Um, so there's a lot of hubbub, right, about what business structure I should choose as an entrepreneur, um, or even these new online businesses, you know, where folks are just kind of buying the dot com, starting these online empires. They're they're doing it now. All of a sudden, they've got AdSense coming in, and they've got online digital products and they've got these million dollar businesses, but they're still technically not businesses. They just got the dot com. And now they're like, uh oh, somebody told me I should actually set this up. So when you have the scenario where somebody's setting up a business, um, when or why, really, should someone choose to actually formally set up a business structure and formally kind of get it registered? Sure. So the uh, most important thing to understand about doing all of this is that it provides you with asset protection. So it protects your personal assets from being taken away from you if something should go wrong and somebody should sue you or if uh, you have loans and you defaulted on your loans, you can't pay them back. You know, not every business works out every time. So um, hopefully the creditors, the people who are coming after you can't come after your personal assets. They can't come after your house. They can't come after your investments. They can't come after your 401ks. If you have these entities set up, they provide you with what we call typically the corporate shield. That's what it is commonly referred to in the legal world. So if you don't have a formal business set up and you're just running all this money through you personally and something does happen like that, um, or somebody sues you or whatever, they can go after all your personal stuff in essence. Exactly. And there's no guarantee, of course, that they're not going to sue you personally anyway. Um, <laughs> but they, setting up the corporate entities, the LLCs, the corporations, they will at least uh, hopefully protect you from that, ultimately from having to give up any of your personal assets if you are sued. Wow. Okay. So... That's important to know. Did you guys hear that? Um, th that's a very good reason why you want to go through the process of actually formally setting up your business. So let's talk a little bit about what options are out there in the structures. A lot of people are confused. There's all these letters and these acronyms associated with the type of business structure you should have or that one should actually look like. So kind of walk us through um, what some of those options are, like LLC, you know, uh, C Corp, S Corp, all that kind of stuff, and what um, the details are, you know, when you're considering what those kind of things look like yeah so the most common that we talk about with people who just start off their businesses are LLCs and corporations um, and you can designate a C corp or an S corp um, in terms of tax purposes and that's certainly something to discuss with your accountant what is going to work best for your particular structure and your tax benefits but on the legal side of things we talk about typically LLCs and corporations and the big distinction between the two is LLCs are a little bit more relaxed the formalities and the rules you have to follow in terms of holding meetings, having a board of directors, having officers appointed. Those are typically more relaxed in the LLC scenario. You don't have to have a lot of those same things. You can, but you don't have to for an LLC. Whereas on the other hand, a corporation, uh, generally the default rules require you to have a board of directors, require you to name three different types of officers, require you to hold annual meetings with your board, um, require you to do a lot of these extra hoops that you jump through. Um, for the most part, a lot of people are going to be able to do everything they want to do with the LLC and that will be sufficient for them and, and maybe the best option because the default kind of tax uh, treatment for LLCs is passed through. So you save a lot of, uh, of money on the 
tax end of things too at the end of the day. But um, if you're looking at starting a tech startup or something that you're going to want to look at, you know, some series funding, some um, venture capital, some angel investments, usually they want to see corporate structures. They want to see traditional corporations. So mm. if you're talking about doing something like that or maybe going public or um, trying to, you know, turn around a quick tech application or something like that and sell for a big profit, might want to think about doing a corporation. But right. if you know, if you're setting up a, a yoga studio or you're setting up a uh, recruiting firm, an LLC, it'll be just fine. Awesome. So that's that's a very important thing. I remember in my own life, um, uh, I don't remember what number of business I'm on at this point, but my very first business, which ultimately ended up being dissolved because let's just say I lost it in the divorce. Um, <laughs> but I actually thought that I was going to need to just be a C-Corp. Um, and it was a nightmare because I did, I had to like name this board of directors and, you know, like have these meetings with my ex and, and we had to like track all these minutes and like document these minutes. And it was just like, you know, so it was, it was, it was interesting, um, double-edged sword because I learned a lot through that process. But what it really taught me was really dive deep, do my investigating, do my learning and reach out to an attorney who knows what the heck I should be doing and an accountant, which you guys are here from a little bit later um, on what to do because it would have saved me a bunch of headaches. So that's great advice. Absolutely. Um, So what do you typically recommend? I mean, if someone comes to you and says, Hey, I think that, you know, that my goal is going to be to start this business, make some money and maybe leave it to my kids. Right. I I want this to be a legacy business or, um, you know, maybe I want to uh, make some money and grow it pretty decent, but ultimately I want to leave it to my kids. So the business structure that you would recommend in that situation would be typically an LLC. Okay. It's, it's easier to set up. Uh, there's less hoops you have to jump through. Uh, and if you're not going to be, you know, trying to s- turn it into a business where you have 50 employees and stock option plans and, um, you know, trying to bring on investors, things like that, it's just going to be a lot less of a headache for you down the line. And it'll be less hoops for you to jump through to make sure that corporate protection remains in place. Because if you don't follow all the rules that the corporate law requires you to follow, you risk losing that protection if someone tries to come after your assets. Awesome. Yeah. So an LLC. um, And and I did learn that. So thank you very much for reiterating that. Um, And so when you say, I'm going to formalize my business now, I'm going to choose an LLC. Um, and that's why I really, guys, I, I want to make sure I point this out. It's important for you to take a look at step one um, in this process, which is kind of getting your mind right. And that's why we start with step one. As you know, in this series um, that we're going through, the first step is getting your mind right, because all of those decisions are critical as you move throughout the series. And we're now at a point where you're supposed to pick your business structure and kind of get it registered. And as Justin just pointed out, you've got to kind of already know what your future looks like in order for you to be able to make your current determination. So that's why we start with step one. If you missed the video in that series, there is going to be a link down below in the description box for you. And we'll also put it up here in the cards. Make sure that you check it out because it's going to start. I give you an amazing get your mind right workbook for you to be able to download to start working through some of those things so that by the time you get to Justin, um, you have it all figured out and you can literally say, all right, this is how I need to move forward. So what other paperwork do you normally recommend? I mean, of course, people are going to pick their structure. They can, you know, get it registered with the state. But is there any other particular paperwork that you recommend people actually take care of in the beginning um, of their business in order to make sure that it also is legit and kind of take that level of protection to another place? Yeah, absolutely. So Typically, what we recommend people do, aside from just set, setting up your articles with the um, Secretary of State, is putting an operating agreement together. Even if it's just a single member LLC, you can find an attorney who will do it for you for a, a decent price that's going to make sure that you have an operating agreement in place and you're following those formalities that are going to try to make sure your shield, your corporate shield remains up. Um, aside from that, of course, insurance is a big deal. We recommend all of our clients take that into consideration when you first start their businesses Uh, and um, your kind of main agreement that you'll use to do your business right so if you're a service company you want to have your client agreement in place and want to make sure that you are touching on the three major uh, points of that being 
the price that your clients are going to pay, the services that you're going to provide, and um, indemnity. So saying, you know, if you screw up and I get sued, you have to indemnify, indemnify me for it. Um, so those are kind of the three major things that you want to think about, right? Making sure your articles are incorporated with the Secretary of State, making sure you think about getting insurance in place to cover yourself, and make sure that you have contracts that uh, you will use with your customers and your clients uh, if that's the type of business you're doing. This is good stuff. I, I would like to know from you guys, based upon what Justin just said, how many of you guys have those three things in place? Or if you don't have it in place, what are the biggest questions that you actually have surrounding those three things? Um, indemnity is a very big thing. I know for me, all of our businesses have been client-based and our client service agreement is critical. So make sure you put down in the comments below a yes if you've got all three, a no if you don't have all three. And if you put no, tell me which one of the three you don't have. And if you don't have any of them, make sure that you click that link and reach out to Justin and cool. Daniel because you ultimately need it. So I do want to address one more question that I get a lot from folks and that's partnerships, right? So major considerations that an entrepreneur would want to take into account and maybe even documentation that they are going to need if they decide to move forward with a partnership or if they're thinking about a partnership. And when I say partnership, I mean, whether it's a family member, a spouse, a child, a best friend, or just a stranger on the street, um, a partnership is what we're addressing because all of those count. So, and, and notice I said a spouse. Guys, we've already talked about this. I've been in this situation. I didn't probably do what Justin's getting ready to tell us to do. And you want to make sure, even if they're going to be with you for the rest of your life, that you have some of this paperwork in place. So when we talk about partnerships, what should they be thinking about? Sure. So even if you haven't done it or um, you've been thinking about doing it, it's never too late. So all, you can all, even if your business has been around for a while, you can always set up a, an agreement. Um, the main thing you should do is set up a partnership agreement or operating agreement or uh, some sort of bylaws, depending on what type of business you're running. They all kind of do the same thing. It's just different ways to call the agreement. Um, but you want to set up an agreement that, between you and your partners that sets forth uh, the contributions that are made, the way profits are going to be distributed. And most importantly, who's going to make the decisions and how the decisions are going to be made for the company. So, and for an LLC, for example, you can have it either managed by the members, so the members vote to make a decision, or uh, you can have it managed by a manager. So you can appoint one of the members to be the manager of the business and make all the major decisions. Um, and you put this in your operating agreement. Um, and, you know, it's probably best to try to have these conversations at the beginning of the business. So, you know, if you're starting up a business, you say, look, I know you're going to be working on it less than I am. So why don't you let me be the manager for now? And, you know, we can always have those discussions down the line if it's not working out that way. Um, you, so you can appoint those things early, talk about them early and often. But all this in a partnership or an operating agreement is definitely uh best practice. It definitely is. I would agree. And I learned a lot from my first experience. And hopefully you guys have also learned a lot today. So what final thoughts, what final pieces of advice that you want to make sure that our subscribers, our viewers, those of us, those of uh, folks who are watching today, what do you want them to make sure that they walk away with, with regards to this entire thought process around being an entrepreneur, um, starting, scaling, leveling up their businesses, top three takeaways you want them to think about? Sure. Top three takeaways. So number one, I would say, uh, think about what you're doing before you do it. Don't shoot first and ask questions later uh, because then you got to come to us and it takes a lot more money <laughs> yes. down the line when you got to sue your business partners to get out of it than it does to set up an agreement now. That sounds ugly. Yeah. It, it can <laughs> Good be. strong it word. Can be. Um, number two, I would say uh, even if you haven't done it yet, it's never too late to talk to an attorney or even if you have some documents in place, but they're just something that you pulled off the internet by yourself, it's never too late to have an attorney review them. And they might be great, but they might be not doing everything that you think they were doing. Mm -hmm. And number three is don't be afraid to make contact with professionals that are going to be able to help you. Uh, attorneys, accountants, HR, HR folk, um, it's very important that you have people that you can go to to ask these questions. Uh, because you're going to, well, you might think you know that you're doing everything right as a business owner. I have that flaw myself mm -hmm. admittedly as a business owner. Um, it's definitely a good idea to have people to bounce my ideas off of at the very least, if not to have somebody do the work for you because you know that they're experts in their field and they're going to do it right. Well, 
Thank you so much. There you guys have it. You have gotten some golden nuggets so far. Again, um, if you like the information that you've received today and you felt like it was amazingly um, impactful for your business, please make sure that you hit that like button, that you click that bell so that you can get notified every time we post a CPTV episode, which is every Tuesday and every Friday. Also, make sure that you guys reach out to Justin um, and, and let them know what your concerns are. And also, of course, if you have any additional questions, make sure you put it down in the comments box. I want to thank you for coming in today so much. Um, you guys got some golden nuggets. And if you can't think about it from this point and move throughout it, don't forget to make sure that you check out that checklist um, down at the bottom that we have downloaded for you. It's kind of a cheat sheet that kind of summarizes everything that Justin has gone over. And shortly, we're going to get our accountant in here to kind of talk to him as well. And that cheat sheet will kind of summarize everything for you. So thank you guys so much for coming in. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Um, this has been amazing. I wish I had known you way back. <laughs> Well, way back. There's a lot of time left. So <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of time left. Work, work and maybe you can come back again. I'm sure we're going to get lots of questions yeah. that might require it. So I'd love to have I you and your to. partner back in and um, we can kind of address it then. So thanks again. That's great. So wasn't that amazing? Yes. So now I'd like to welcome to our studio today, Jeff Capron, CPA and partner with Growth and Company Accounting Firm. Jeff currently works as a full service accountant for hundreds of small businesses, including my own. And when I say he is amazing, I mean amazing. So let's give a huge welcome to Jeff Capron. So thank you so much for coming in today, sharing your words of wisdom with our audience. Um, and I think it's really important because so many folks really want to get to the nitty gritty and the bottom line on what decisions they should make. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me today. Thanks. Absolutely. So let's just dive right in. I mean, right. I'm excited to pick your brain um, and to give our subscribers and our viewers some great insights. So let me start by saying, if someone is choosing a business structure, what are the major things that they should really be thinking about when they're making that decision with, with regards to taxes? Because I know that's an important part in making that decision. The thing that I try to get across to people is I want to meet with them, try to understand where their future is going to be mm -hmm. and, and bring that perspective into the tax decision making. Don't want to just say, do this way, do that way. It's The business is going to be with them for a long time. So we want to make sure we make the decision up front to fit the goals and needs that they're trying to achieve later on in life as well. Mm -hmm. So from a business standpoint, the they have multiple entities they can choose from. They usually, the big one now is LLCs that people are just it easily is. go set up and, and start with. LLCs are only there for legal purposes. It's really not a tax entity. It's uh, more provides coverage for liability issues and things of that nature. Right. So from there, if you start an LLC, you have to make a choice of being a corporation for tax purposes or a sole proprietor for tax purposes, or even a partnership if there's more than one individual in the LLC. And then from there, you make your decisions accordingly. And a, a lot of it depends on what everybody's personal goals are and the decisions they want to make moving forward. So it's it's an individual decision that you sit down, you got to pick the brains of the people that you're dealing with, and then come to the conclusion and provide the tax options on each step along the way for them. Mm -hmm. So if someone does choose like the LLC, because mm -hmm. that is the most popular Correct. part. And I remember um, in one of my businesses, I was an LLC. And then we got to a certain point where you were like, look, we need to adopt an S corp mm -hmm. status because you're getting killed on taxes. Because when you're an LLC, in essence, you're kind of, reporting out that revenue or that income on your personal income taxes, right? You're, it's, if you're a single member LLC, you'll be taxed on a, what's known as a Schedule C on your 1040. All the income, after the net income of that is subject to them what's known as self-employment tax. The self-employment tax is what goes and funds your own personal Social Security benefits later on in life and if it's still available somewhere in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at that, the simple number I tell everybody, whatever the net income of your business is, 15% of that's gonna go to fund your social security. And okay. then on top of that, now you gotta pay your normal tax on, on that. So you could end up being in roughly a 30 to 40% tax rate if you're in the 15 to 20% personal rate 
less than the 15% of self-employment tax. Now, what we usually recommend for simplicity purposes, sometimes we try to start people on the LLC as a sole proprietor. Just some people come and say they want to start a business, but they're not sure it's a hobby that they're just going to turn into something. And then they get into it and they decide, I just want to go back and be an employee somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's like, don't overcomplicate it in the beginning and set up all these corporate structures and everything. You want to make sure this is what you want to do for an extended period of time before you throw the extra expense of filing corporate return, personal returns, and the whole nine yards on that. So then if that decision's there and they're regular LLC, then, then we try to find ways to minimize the tax effects of that self-employment tax by converting them to an S-Corp, which then what an S-Corp will do is the income still flows through your personal 1040 that you pay the personal tax rates at, but it, the S-Corp income is not subject to the self-employment tax part of it. We'll put the person maybe on payroll or something so they still get a W-2 and still fund Social Security to some degree for them, but not to the effect of the whole um, income. incomes number so we minimize the tax effect that way as well right so so in essence what you're saying is if someone's an llc at first start the llc because it's simple mm -hmm. um and usually the first few years of having a business you're going to not necessarily have income you're going to have losses and so those losses would then go against your personal taxes and bring down your Correct. tax liability so as long as your business is kind of in loss mode an llc alone would probably be a good fit but then once you start generating profit and income you would probably recommend like you did for me, all right, let's convert you to an escort because now your business is actually showing profits and you're making money and you're suffering the consequences of that. So as soon as you get to that point where you are seeing profit on your business and not just losses, then let's convert you because otherwise you're going to be subject to the entire income of the business paying taxes versus just your salary that you kind of assign Correct. yourself. And, and that's usually the big number everybody forgets about is that self-employment tax issue that comes into play. And a lot of the discussions I end up with having with people is how much do you really want to fund it? Do you, is, is that, are there other ways you are funding your retirement in the future so you don't want to count on Social Security? For some people, that is their only method of future living is the Social Security money. So they may want to fund a little bit more. Others, through some better planning, may fund retirement plans and things of that nature. So it, Again, it turns into individual issues that you just got to sit down with everybody, have the discussions, get inside their head, try to figure out which direction they're going and work with them to come up with the best way to mitigate any tax consequences and, and limit it to the best of our abilities. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's great insight, because I think that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs um, or small business folks, even though, you know, they may have already established that LLC, they've already done it, you know, because somebody told them you should be an LLC. Everybody's an LLC. They don't necessarily know that you can convert that for tax purposes. You can ultimately change that. And if you've got a good accountant that you're working with, like Jeff, um, you would ultimately then be advised at that point, all right, we're making too much money. Let's look at where else we want to go. So would you ever recommend to somebody um, that they should convert to a C-Corp? Um, the C-Corp level is what, what a C-Corp ends up doing. That in itself is its own tax paying entity. So the only way to get money out of that out of a C-Corp for yourself is through either dividends, like if it's a normal Fortune 500 company, or taking it out through wages. C-Corps, I tend to stay away from because you end up with that double taxation mm -hmm. issue. If there's profit in the corporation, you're going to pay tax at the corporate level. And then if you want to get that profit out, you're going to pay the tax again at the personal level. I rarely recommend C corporations unless the income is just going to be so astronomical that we have to do some more sophisticated planning to those individuals. If, if everybody's in less gross revenue, there's things we can do to control the tax liabilities moving forward to minimize them very well. More like an S corp. Correct. Right. Okay. So that's, that's awesome insight. Um, so in essence, you think that Everybody kind of goes through this, the stages and the phases, LLC, maybe to start. I mean, do, would you ever tell somebody, oh, be a sole proprietor and stay a sole proprietor? If the business is more at the hobby end of things, it, they're going to be small. They, they may generate ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 of actually net income at the end of the day. It's not really going to affect their 
overall tax situation. Mm -hmm. They're getting a W-2. They're doing this as a side job just to make some extra revenue. I'd probably just for simplicity purposes, keep it as a sole proprietor. Mm -hmm. um, and that way it's it's just there. It, it's nothing, you don't want to overcomplicate the situation. Right. Like, taxes are complicated enough for people, so you don't want to overwhelm them and put layers and layers of Yes. On top of your 1040, then you right. got this S Corp you got to do. And you, you do and all the dates other, are all different. Right, the dates, and yeah, I know the dates for me are always in my head. Like I, I, my whole life, I've always known that April 15th is tax day. Right. And I mean, that's even what the media tells us. But when you have a business, your tax day is a little different, right? right. So when you're an LLC or, or an S Corp, is the tax deadline the same? They've actually changed those dates now. So okay. the, for a regular corporation, a C corporation, um, that date is now April 15th. So okay. they, they moved that. It used to be all corporations were March 15th, but S Corps are still on the March 15th date. You can get extensions for it, which then moves the date to September 15th. Like with individuals, you can extend an individual from April 15th to October 15th. But with any of the extensions, the IRS does like their money on the due dates of the September or the April or March date. So, so if you're owing money, you still got to pay. You still got to pay yeah. to avoid some penalties and interest down the road. Right, right. Awesome. So um, it sounds like, you know, when you are recommending, like if, if an entrepreneur comes to you and says, I met with my attorney for liability purposes, they said that I need to start a company um, or an organization officially. Um, and, and there's a lot of folks out there who have these online businesses mm -hmm. and their only business right now is their name it.com. And they haven't really gone to the lengths of creating a true business entity. And then these online businesses are generating all this money. They're getting money from Google AdSense. They're getting money from ads. They're getting money from affiliate if they're getting money from online digital products and they don't necessarily ever really realize that they need to create a business entity because all they've purchased is that domain name and all of a sudden they have a business. So let's just say somebody comes to you, they have an online business and their online business is, you know, generating for them multiple six figures. And they came, you know, like my, my account, my attorney says, I'm, I'm open to all this liability. I need to start a business. If someone was in that position, would you make the recommendation for them to do, you know, LLC and convert to S Corp? Yes, or? That, that, that would probably be the best way to go would be the LLC to start, which the attorney can set up. Very simple to set up with the Secretary of State's office. Mm -hmm. And then we would do the conversion to an S Corp to shelter the money from the self-employment tax issue that I mentioned previously. Mm -hmm. And then we would set them up with some sort of W-2 wage so they get some some in that and paid into the Social Security Administration. And then it just moves. Whatever other expenses they can for their website, domain name, things of that nature will be just regular normal business expenses. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I try to just keep it, or I tell my clients, keep it as simple as possible. Don't overcomplicate the situations. And if you think it's a deductible for your business, we, we try to make sure it is deductible for the business. But a lot of people just try to overcomplicate the situation and throw a lot of personal expenses in their business. And at some point, those catch up to you. Yeah. And it, it, you just need to keep it simple. Yeah, it's, and it's, you're, you're amazing at that. And one of the things I love about working with you is not only are you an accountant? So you do the tax stuff and you do all that stuff, but you're also business minded because you're a entrepreneur yourself. You're a sure. small business owner. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes you're able to look at those numbers and look at those reports and make recommendations to me about, well, you know, you might have to adjust your pricing. You need to cut some expenses. So almost a CFO mm -hmm. um, type of advice as well, which I would say if you're looking for an accountant and you, you need to have access to someone who not only provides you with basic CPA or accounting services, but will also help you on a monthly ba basis, set up your accounting codes, set up your chart of accounts, help you reconcile. But most importantly, when those numbers come out, and, and you know, I recommend um, that you review those pretty regularly. And don't worry, we'll put a link down at the bottom for a video that we have that actually walks you through how to set up your finances, how to kind of connect those things to your technology. And then later on down the line, we'll get really in depth into those. But looking at those reports, Jeff is really good about saying from a CFO's mind, um, this is where your business is going. We need to go ahead and set this up this way so that we can track these numbers so that you can then make good decisions about your business. And I think that you are amazing at that's, that. That's one of the things I love trying to do with, with a lot of my clients is I'm not a behind the desk guy. 
um, get out in the field. I go to the client's office. I meet with them. I like to learn about their business. So there is a connection of how is that revenue generated? How are these expenses coming about? So when the recommendations are there, it means more. Yeah. It's just not when when clients come to me and say, I'm losing money or I need to make more money. And the simple answer is usually, well, create more sales or cut these expenses or lay people off. But there's you need to know more and understand why to get to those points. So it, it makes sense for everybody involved so that they just don't, well, how do I do it? And they don't, you can't help them with the answer. Right. I know we've had those conversations. Yes, plenty of times. <laughs> I know we've had them and you've been great. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so it's great. Um, well, is there anything else that you would like our viewers to know from your perspective, um, both almost as a CFO mind and a CPA mind um, that you would say, these are like my my top three things I want you to make sure you're you're thinking about um, as you move forward with your decision to pick your business structure and then ultimately get it registered. I want everybody just to to keep it simple. I want them to go make money, find their niche in life that they feel they can make money, and then just keep it simple. Generate the revenue. Don't over expand beyond their means. Make sure when they do grow, you grow smartly, incrementally, and don't. Don't try to fast track things mm -hmm. and the, they need to know their numbers. If they do not know their numbers, their business will, it may succeed in spite of themselves, but they need to understand how they're generating their money and where their expenses are coming from so they can keep improving on a daily basis. Do not get complacent in your business. It's an ever evolving, ever changing entity. It lives, breathes and grows as the owner does. So, Stay on top of it and just make sure at the end of the day, you're you're all in with it. Absolutely. Thank you. That is so true. And you guys make sure that you click the link below because the next video in this series is how to set up your financial structure. Um, I'm going to walk you through kind of the same tips and tools that Jeff even went through, how to make sure you get your tax ID because you want that, how to set up, choose your bank, how to kind of choose your accounting software, how to do the basic connection. Um, I won't walk through financial statements with you. I won't have enough time, but we will talk in depth about what Jeff just said is knowing your numbers and why it's so important. So I'm excited for you guys check that out make sure you click the link below um and thank you so much for your insight you guys got some really good expensive information for free today so again if you loved this make sure that you like that hit that like button hit that bell so that you're notified and make sure you subscribe because this is just the beginning of some great content and again down the bottom is a link for you to reach out to jeff if you've got any questions if you really want to get on his calendar make sure you do it pretty quickly because he is very busy um and the best time to do it is probably outside of tax time but i don't even know if you really have an outside of tax time 24 7 so make sure you reach out he'd be happy to answer your questions do that initial assessment just like he said kind of get an idea of your business and make the recommendation. Jeff is amazing. And if there's one thing I can tell you from an entrepreneurial perspective is invest in a couple of things. And when it comes to your business, don't be afraid to. One is a great accountant for sure. And the second is yourself and your education. And you've already taken the first step in doing that by being here. So thank you so much for being Thanks here, for Jeff. Me. Absolutely. So if you want to get in touch with Jeff looking for accounting help, click the link below and complete the brief application form and he will be in touch. Wow. Wasn't that amazing, you guys? You got access to some real golden nuggets and I am so glad to be able to help you with that. And I'm not done. I'm going to give you guys a free cheat sheet that will summarize a lot of what you heard today. And it will give you one of my favorite tools that will tell you what you need and where to go in your state to actually register your business. So make sure you click the link below and go grab it. So whew, today I have given you some serious secret sauce. So now I've got a question for you. Now that you have all this information, what business structure are you leaning towards and why? If you already registered your business, what type of business is it and why? Put your response for me down in the comments below because inquiring minds want to know and I want to get your feedback and also see what you did.
So there you have it. Don't forget to check out all the detailed videos and links I mentioned today below in the description box. They will really take each of these steps in the series to the next level for you. And if you like this video, please help me out. Hit the subscribe button, hit that bell so you will be notified when we post the next episode of CPTV, which is every Tuesday and Friday. Share this with your friends who need this too and give me a thumbs up. Bye loves and I will see you in a couple days.